last thing, Cora, gaslighting is the process of causing someone to doubt their own thoughts, beliefs or perceptions. Minister, we have reached the stage of government gaslighting that people are quote-tweeting quote news headlines, correcting the information that has been falsely peddled by yourselves. The government didn't listen to NEFID advice in the run-up to Christmas and instead went along with what its lobbyist friends wanted. In the last week or so, we have had the Tanisha, the Taoiseach and yourself doing interviews and completely contradicting yourselves, refusing to accept responsibility for the fact that Ireland is now the worst country in the world regarding COVID resurgence. I was also dismayed to see that Letterkenny University Hospital has been so badly impacted by this wave of COVID. Staff were called, in to come in, were called to come in urgently so that extra beds could be opened up earlier this week, while patients were being seen and triaged in ambulances in the car park. Because of the high numbers of COVID and the level of community transmission, we have a staffing crisis. There are reportedly around 170 staff from Letterkenny University Hospital unavailable to work due to COVID. Staff in Letterkenny and other settings are working extra hours and extra shifts to try and help with the capacity. While the government reopened the economy to let businesses boost their profits, those on the front line of our health services have had absolutely no let up since last year. They have made huge sacrifices in the fight against COVID and the government has let them all down. This morning it was reported that the health, health staff were self -isolate, that were self-isolating due, due to being in close contact with positive COVID cases have been called back into work. Those, those who are asymptomatic. Such is a crisis in the staffing of our health service that we are bringing potentially contagious staff back into settings with sick and vulnerable people and health staff, putting them all at risk. This is what happened in Letterkenny Hospital last week. Staff were called back into work despite being identified as close contacts of people with COVID. Today, there are just 24 available ICU beds in public hospitals across the country. 14 acute hospitals have no ICU beds available. The Minister's media appearances are not doing anything to reassure the public about the competency of the government in handling of this pandemic. If you could just give an, an honest, straight answer, take accountability for wrong decisions and clearly communicate, it, communicate how to make things better, there could be more buy-in. Yes, there is COVID fatigue, but there is, general, there is mainly government spin fatigue. The Irish electorate is not stupid and it does, it does not like to be taken for fools either, Minister. Numbers in Donegal and border counties have been consistently high as we have waited to see what, what belated action would be taken in the north. Months ago, I sent in a Freedom of Information request about the level of cooperation and forward planning taking place between the north and south in relation to COVID restrictions and management. And I got responses from the NEFID or from the, the, the Chief Medical Officer and from the HSE saying basically no contacts have been happening. And I only yesterday received a reply from the Department of the Taoiseach's office releasing one document out of 33, and which basically says nothing. And that's the height of the, the co cooperation that's taken place. Yesterday, I attended the online briefing of the Oireachtas Disability Group, where we heard from organisations working with people with disabilities. While in the UK, in the first wave, six in ten of all COVID deaths were of people with disabilities, thankfully we managed to avoid such a terrible fate here but there are serious concerns about this round and what's happening. Support for organisations have staffing issues due to the high rate of COVID, and there are no details for vaccinating people with disabilities who are under 65 years of age. Will staff in Section 38 and 39 organisations be treated as equally essential in getting vaccinations as well, Minister? At the start of the pandemic, disability organisations were included on the NEFID Vulnerable People subgroup, but this subgroup was disbanded last year. Why? Advocates, advocates say that they are adequately noticing the gap and not having this subgroup and have called for its urgent reinstatement. Surely with the COVID numbers as high as they are and have been, vulnerable people should be represented. How, can women, how many women are there in the room with decision makers as well? How can we be protecting all of the society if we're only hearing from male and pale voices? That's not to be disparaging about NEFID, but we have to make an effort to ensure that diverse and representative, representative voices are present at the decision-making tables. A fi final point I would like to make in my brief time today is that the high-risk groups whose pandemic unemployment payment has been reduced to €203 Euro per week. Members of the Iraqis Disability Group mentioned it also. If you are high risk but your workplace remains open, without the possibility of use for work from home and with an uncompromising employer, there are instances of people being forced into, to go into the workplace despite their high risk vulnerability and this needs to be investigated. Your government and lobbyists always focus on employees, but COVID has given an opportunity for exploitative employers to be uncovered and, pain, and penalised, if you wish to do it, and it will be interesting to see if you will. Sadly, we're almost a year into this crisis, and what is obvious to me is that, that we, we are 
that all you are interested in is publicity and publicity stunts. Thank you, Deputy. You have learned nothing. More gaslighting is all we're getting. Th thank, thank you. Thank you, Deputy.